Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Extra Time TV. This is Andres Oklal. I'm Kevin Campbell. And guys, we're going to speak about the sad conclusion to Trinidad versus Martinique. Uh, Trinidad Tobago, sorry. We lost 2-0. Mm -hmm. um, it was hardly the result anybody wanted. We knew it was going to be a tight game, Kevin. Yeah. Um, what was very interesting about this game is that before we even get started, that Trinidad were without their main attackers. Yeah. Uh, Kenwin Jones came off injured and Molino, uh, which is something we'll discuss a little later on, you yeah. know, he was you know, not called to the team, he was being yeah. punished. Uh, Kevon, what do you think about the game? Yeah, Andre, it ended 2-0 mm -hmm. after extra time. Goals from um, Parizia and mm -hmm. Lagil meant that Martinique now they're in the Gold Cup. Yep. And turn that we have to settle for second place. Mm -hmm. But as the game progressed, Andre, we spoke last time about how we need to actually go on the front foot, yep. how we needed to show initiative and dominance. But we did not do that. No. Yes, we had chances. I mean, we hit the post and the bar. Mm. Um, a Joby great Jones. free kick from Jovian Jones, yeah. yeah. And Martin had chances as well. They hit the post and they had a couple of one-on-ones with Jamaica Williams. Mm. But I think that we should have buried our chances. Yeah. And not finishing meant that we now suffer the consequences. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, I, I always say this, we spoke about it in our preview. We could check it out and see how close we were. Mm -hmm. um, we knew it was going to be a tight game. These guys are no pushovers. They want to prove themselves because we explained the whole thing about how they're not actually you know, in, in, in FIFA competition. So yeah. this is a big deal for them. And um, I don't think complacency was the issue. I just think finishing, as mm -hmm. you said. It was a huge problem and also there were you know talks coming out of the camp that uh, the training uh, preparation wasn't yeah, ideal yeah. i think the ground was wet supposedly completely uh, waterlogged yeah. yeah so the team was not able to prepare properly i think the traveling which we spoke about in the preview was also a bit burdensome and there's a lot of uh, things outside the football field that mm -hmm. apparently took place so listen we're not making excuses but it seems like a lot went on here yeah um it is disappointing because to me stephen hart this, he's going to get judged since the Haiti game. Mm -hmm. Now they're going to say, well, listen, we should have beaten. People care. Let's say we should have beaten uh, Martinique, sorry. Yeah. And, um, but what I think is, is that, so you have this plan. It revolves around Kenwin Jones and Molino. And all of a sudden, you lose your two main attackers. Yeah. You know, what do you do? And it shows that maybe the alternatives are not really there yet. Levi Garcia is fantastic. You all know how much I like him. Mm -hmm. But um, it shows you that the international stage is definitely another level and himself and Winchester and those guys. It shows that we really need a plan B. Yeah. Uh, maybe players like Willis Plaza and they may have to return because it's it's not that I'm trying to take away from Martinique's victory, but it seems as if, you know, we really ran out of ideas as the game went along. Yeah, I think sort of complacency, complacency mm -hmm. stepped in a bit, yeah. especially late on in the game. Mm -hmm. Because we started pretty good mm -hmm. and maintained a lot of good pressure, yeah. but we did not create enough and we did not finish our chances. Yep. But Martinique, credit to them. Mm -hmm, yeah. Because they're a technical team, they play really tight, and they forced Trinidad to play at their tempo. Yep. And again, they have really powerful midfielders. Julian Faubert was a, a, a thorn in the side of Trinidad the whole night. Mm -hmm. And um, I would think that going forward, we would need to get that momentum back. Yeah. And it's really hard. Why? Because we have a big fixture backlog yep. coming up. Okay guys, so Trinidad and Tobago still have a chance to make it into the Gold Cup. Kevon will do what he always does and explains. It's four groups of three, right? Yep. And the top four teams advance to the Gold Cup. And the three best second place teams, they go into a playoff in round four. Mm -hmm. And Trinidad and Tobago, we are in that playoff. Why? Because we finished second in our group and we have a superior goal difference to that of Antigua. Now, after that round, the winner of that plays the fifth place team in the Copa Centro Americano, which takes place in Panama in February of next year. Now, when we play that winner, mm -hmm. the, that winner will go to the Gold Cup ne next year, July. Yes. So, hope is not lost. And just to note, only two teams have qualified for the Gold Cup thus far from the Caribbean. That's who? Curacao and Martinique. Because Jamaica, they still are in a bit of flux because of the Hurricane Matthew. Yeah. Um, games got postponed in Haiti and Jamaica. So our potential opponents in that next playoff round mm -hmm. is French Guyana, Suriname, Antigua, St. Kitts, 
Haiti or Jamaica. Yes. So that means that hope is still alive for the Soko Warriors. So I'm looking for what's left of my brains after my mind exploded there. <laughs> so those of you, after you're done extinguishing your brains, this is definitely, we still have a chance. Yeah. So let's see how it works out. Yeah. It is, it is a, a complicated issue. Yes, yeah. we have a chance. Thumbs up. Yeah. I guess, but the thing is, how is that going to work? International football, it's difficult to play two games in one international break. Mm -hmm. So, to play in two sets of competitive fixtures, how is it going to work? We have well-documented problems with the Trinidad team organizing for straightforward friendlies. So, I can only imagine the logistical nightmare is going to be. Yeah. Um, who are you going to prioritize? How is Stephen Hart going to arrange this? Are they going to have two teams? Maybe split it. Uh, they obviously, I think they're going to prioritize the World Cup, of course. Yeah. Um, if I had to choose, I would have prioritized the World Cup and probably sent a B team or something. And maybe, mm -hmm. this is me, this is real, real half silver lining, glasses <laughs> half empty, whatever expression you choose. Yeah. It may be a blessing in disguise if done properly. Stephen Ann has his main team, goes after the Costa Rica game, prioritizes that, but has a second team competing. Yeah. If they don't win, well, unfortunately, no, but at least these guys, he has a second pool of players, which I think we need desperately. Mm -hmm. The players that won the fringes get to play. They get international experience. So as we go along in the tournament, we have guys with competitive experience. So this is me being very, very, trying to thumbs up, yeah. see the silver lining if there is one. But we have a chance, um, I think, is it impossible? It sounds that way, but it, it, I, I can't see how it'll work. But that's, yeah. that's, this is me trying to find some positive out of this. I think guys like you, Anthony Marshall, could mm -hmm. come into that second team. Mm -hmm. But Andre, remember that in the grand scheme of things, the first and second groups haven't been settled as yet yep. because of Hurricane Matthew. Yep. So the teams we can potentially face in that second playoff round mm -hmm. would be teams like French Guyana, mm -hmm. Suriname, St. Kitts, Antigua. Haiti or Jamaica yep. and honestly Andre I fancy us against those teams yep. so um, and in the Copa America sorry the Copa Central American mm -hmm. most likely that may be Guatemala or El Salvador yep. we may have to play so again I fancy us yeah, so we'll... being positive we're going to make the Gold Cup yeah I, I, I think so it, it's, it's definitely not ideal but from somebody from the outside looking of course with Stephen Hart nobody likes to lose a game like that but I'm thinking just from the point I made before it may be uh, an opportunity to try a second set of players and even if they don't win let's god forbid they don't win and they don't qualify at least you have some guys who got some international caps so we have this in a way bonus friendlies then they're yeah. not even friendlies because they are competitive so you're getting Unfortunately, the circumstances are not great, but you get in these games and, you know, fellas, the fringe players like Plaza who need to return uh, to choice keepers and it will go. Mm -hmm. Maybe the under 20s, who knows? Yeah. I think it will be a perfect exercise. I don't know how the technical uh, directors and they will interpret and what measure they will take. Um, we'll definitely take a look and see how that turns out. Yeah, because it's an additional two games and, yeah. and hopefully if we progress, an additional four games. Mm -hmm. So as a fan and an analyst, I'm happy. More games. More games. Yeah. But as a coach, I'm sure Stephen Hart would be scratching his head. Yep. But, uh, you know, so with that being said, lots of other things have been taking place. Um, for those of you who don't know, according to uh, Wide868, uh, uh, Kevin Molino um, basically got um, in trouble for basically going out clubbing in uh, Martinique. Yeah, who does that? Yeah, <laughs> apparently. So um, that, that's just based on the report. But it's interesting because he had an incident a couple of weeks ago, mm -hmm. the last time around. and. He, we saw the press conference and Kevin was like, you know, the discipline, you know, whatever. He, it seems like he's on track. But uh, that's a heavy loss. And to follow this up, Kevin said, according to, um, what is it, the Orlando Sentinel, mm -hmm. um, that he's now going to take a year off from international football. Yeah. So something, you know, isn't right. Yeah. Um, I'm not too sure. I don't want to say it'll be irresponsible to say, yeah. you know, I can just say my opinion. Uh, it seems very strange and you know this this guy is important for us he's our number 10 generally uh kevon this is this is possibly you know yeah. uh, very bad news for the national team it is and for kevin molino in mm -hmm. my opinion yeah because uh, in my opinion this could be career suicide for molino mm -hmm. because you enter one of the most important phases of your international career mm -hmm. progression to a world cup playing the best teams in Concacaf. this would have been a perfect template and a perfect um, show for him to showcase his skills mm -hmm. to potentially move to Europe. Yep. So this can be a stumbling block and a hindrance if he looks to build confidence in potential suitors. Yep, uh, it's, it's, 
uh, you use the right word. It could be career. It could be dangerous for his uh, because you would think Orlando would be a stepping stone to maybe Europe because he is that good. Even Kaka said when he was at EC Milan, he could see somebody like Kevin Molino fitting in. He said yeah. that a while back, not the exact words. So it's strange. I don't get it. Um, this is a problem that has haunted Trinidadian players before. Not just in football, you know, the limelight, the, the, the party lifestyle caught up with him. Um, as I said, it's all reported, so we'll have to see what unfolds. Obviously, he's yet to really release a proper statement. Yeah. Um, the TTFA as well will probably have to release a statement as well. So, as a Trinidadian, well, a, a, a Soka Warrior fan, I'm kind of traumatized by this because he's a player I hold in very high regard in terms mm -hmm. of his football abilities. But in, to, in the context of what's going on, it happened twice in such a close period. Yeah. It seems strange. It seems he doesn't seem like a guy that would do something like that. But no, then no, again, no. you know, listen, this is what took place. Yeah. Um, and maybe Stephen Hart will get a lot of criticism because of this, because a lot of people are saying he doesn't know how to handle the players. The first time around, they said they shouldn't, he shouldn't have played in the, uh, was it the Guatemala game mm -hmm. when they drew? And now they're saying, you know, he needs to clamp down on his players and he shouldn't have cut him. It's, it's like a, it's, it's, it's a thankless job, I guess. Yeah. Um, a lot of people are saying, and it's, it, it gave, is a very divisive line online, and you guys can comment in the comment section below. A lot of people are saying, ask him if he doesn't care about the football team, he doesn't have a good attitude, get rid of him. Which mm -hmm. I partially agree with as a guy who worked with coaches. Yeah. And then there are some people saying something isn't right. So there's definitely a line in terms of opinion in Trinidad. So until we know all the facts, we're just going to base, some always base our conclusions on what was reported. Mm -hmm. And it seems like it's a lose-lose for everyone. Yeah, I mean, coaching is a double-edged sword in reality, yeah. so hard decision will need to be vital. Um, I think if I were in charge, mm -hmm. I would look at the history of the player, mm -hmm. and not just this calendar year, but mm -hmm. before. And if he was a kind of character to be given another chance, mm -hmm. then I would give it to him. Yep. If not, if there were previous discrepancies that we as um as as analysts mm -hmm. not aware because yeah. some stuff that goes on in, in the locker rooms yep. we're just not privy to. Yeah, we won't know. Yeah, then I would not. So mm -hmm. I think that all that needs to be taken into consideration before a definite decision has been made. Mm -hmm. And this we def it definitely needs to be sorted out now because it's so close to the first game in the hex, yeah. which Kevin explained in great detail. Mm -hmm. Check out the link afterwards. Um, it just seems very unsettling. It seems like everything is coming apart at the wrong time for Trinidad. It yeah. seems like we were going on a nice run. That Guatemala game, you know, we know the same stuff. We spoke about Molino and the others. It seems as if we are doing everything we can to destabilize yeah. what seems like we have a, sta uh, you know, a stable team putting mm -hmm. things together. I hope we don't. I hope we don't make that mistake. I hope complacency is not setting in where apparently we got some victories and everyone thinks we're going to do well. It's, don't get me wrong, I make no mistake, that hex is going to be difficult. Mm -hmm. um, I still believe Hart is the right guy for the job. So we'll see how it unfolds, Kevon. I will definitely get more details. We're going to speak to guys, you know, like former Soka Warriors, student John, we'll, we'll post his opinion mm -hmm. um, online when we get a chance. Um, so Kevon, with all that being said, you know, we have some tough times to turn on. So yeah. Kevon, where can we find you? You can find me at Kev868 on Twitter and Instagram. Andre? You can find me at Andre Soklal on in <laughs> Instagram. I was going to say Inter Milan. <laughs> um, on Instagram and Twitter. And don't forget to like and subscribe. And be sure to ask us questions because we answer them all. Yes, and when you like and subscribe, you automatically qualify for a chance to win a copy of FIFA 17 for whichever console you have. And also, a chance to win tickets for the upcoming qualifiers against Costa Rica. Yeah. Okay, everyone, and don't forget, if you like and subscribe our YouTube page, Extra Time TV, you instantly qualify for the opportunity to win two tickets to the Trinidad and Tobago versus Costa Rica on November 2016.